Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be working on the Nakamichi CR7A, uh, which is in the perfect shape. I just turn it on, open, uh, heads looks good. I have a little suspicion that playback head sits not very well. Uh, I just connected it to my uh, Scarlett interface uh, to the computer to set up levels. And what I'd like to check first, uh, if it's rotate, if it's placed, and how well it's placed as a frequency sweep. So now I'm switching to the tape. I fast forward, rewind as well. Let's see, play back. And let's see spectrum. Right. We come into 15 kilohertz, good levels. Really shows minus 13 on 15 kilohertz. Right channel minus 14 at eight. But all the all keeps really, really well. So it's two kilohertz, four hundred gears. So yeah. Really. So how was run? So let's see. Just for the case, oscilloscope. Yeah, as I told, Tizen was a little bit off, but it doesn't mess up much with the levels. Or I would say it's it's enough of. <laughs> if you turn on this azure, it will be a uh, wrong angle. No. All right. So and here is a playback ism. So let's let's play a little bit. Yeah, here we can go lower, higher. It's maximum. This one looks the best, so uh, it's 1030. All right, I believe in this position it should perform even better. All right, spectrum, it's going up. And it keeps well, really, you see. 10 kilohertz. Levels have started to increase, and to 15 is plus 1 decibel, you see, on both channels. So, heads are in, in a very good shape. All right, so I prom promise it to do a mechanical service, lubricate, replace belts, and I promise it to make this deck sound well. From what I do, and I learned it with CR7 and CR series, and I correct 505, I did the same. Uh, the best sound like uh, they produce when I install Muse capacitors and when I increase one microfarad to 2.2 microfarads in the Dolby board. So it gives the most pleasant sound coming from this deck and keeping all the frequency response. All right, so let's me work on this deck. I will recap and we will tune it and we will see how it will perform and as of now the last thing i would check if it can calibrate metal tape so let me install sony metal tape and let's see i put azimut in the middle let's see how it can calibrate All right, everything works because metal tape is the most tough to calibrate due to high bias levels. So everything works, perform well, uh, but uh, owner don't like the sound from this deck. Sound is flat, lifeless, same as uh, we observed it like half a year ago when I was doing one of the CR7s and like it wasn't so pleasant and owner didn't 
want to change capacitors so it was okay but nothing special and like uh, later decks i've been doing like i replace its uh, capacitors and the sound drastically changes make it live pleasant to listen and so on all right see you in the next part i'm going to remove the cover now and like we'll start pulling up the tape transport or if you want to stay you're welcome all right i will try to do it quick and easy so first things first remove the door close the transport power off deck and remove power plug because we will be working inside the deck and we should be careful with high voltages i will prepare my box for the screws all right and let's start disassembling so the assembly starts from the side screws to remove the top cover Some decks has also screws on the back, so remember to check those as well. Nakamichi usually don't. Only like latest DR series have a couple screws on the back. And now we should be able to pull out the cover and put it aside into some soft place to keep it intact. Next, we need to remove the front panel to get to the tape transport. Uh, front panels usually have three screws on top, three or four, and three or four from the below. So let me remove the bottom screws. It, this deck has three. All right. What is squeaking in this? <laughs> That's the panels which are keep uh, board in the pop-up position. So they're squeaking. <laughs> all right, so. And remember to not mess the screws. So all the screws are black. Just for aesthetic. Because I have seen decks which comes like in random order <laughs> of screws. Alright, now we can gently remove this panel and put aside to not do any scratches to this beautiful panel. Alright, here is some trash here. All right, next, we need to get to the tape transport. So this one has a couple of wires and they are connected all together with these zip ties. So I will cut them off. Be careful to not cut the wires itself. And now we can separate the wires going from the tape transport. So these color ones these two connectors ah, someone was here <laughs> this connector sits inside the wires well this cable so i will put it back all right and we have so this not from the transport we should have head connectors and let me see record heads is here the blue cable so you see someone was working on this deck because these cables usually tight here is the rice head I believe yeah right here no. and playback head left 
if you would need to pull up this board and additionally Dolby board to get to this cable so let's remove the screws so you're removing just four so this board has six screws two of them here these two uh, keep the rotation mechanism so don't remove them all right that's the top board and now it can be pulled it up and fix it in this position all right and the dolby board we're removing just two screws one is here and one is here now dolby board can be pulled like that and here we have the head connector from the playback amplifier uh -huh. so they put zip tie I need more room. oops I'm sorry for that noise and this how wires can just pull by, by itself. Come on. All right. And I need to remove the zip tie. They are already get uh, aged. You see, they yellowish, not white. This means that this deck has been serviced a while ago, maybe 10 to 15 years. All right, and I'm pushing this head wire here. Now we can push this board down, and we have full access to remove the tape transport from this deck. So, as quick as that, I will start from removing two bottom screws which holds the tape transport right here and you may use this as a service manual to replace belts <laughs> because that's what you would need to do to do that all right done so let's get it to separate Make sure that you keep the transport and the last screw which sits right here. As far as I remember, let me see if it would be enough to pull it up. No, but if you need to remove this. For some reason, it was not fully screwed. Really interesting. Whoa! Who does it? I'm afraid we need to cut this zip tie as well, right here. Yes, I like that. So now we have access and we have room to remove the tape transport. So 
Let's be gently. Like that. Oh, one more cable here. Now it is separated and I can remove the dead body to the side to be able to work on the tape transport. Alright, it would be next chapter, so stay tuned. Okay, and this would be the part three where I will be working on this tape transport. So as you may see it's NQ tape transport uh, with uh, direct drive motor with additional motor for the azimuth correction so everything looks pretty familiar so owner provided a set of parts to replace so let's start looking so first thing first let's disassemble the motor board Right, board is up. Next, have to use different screwdriver for this screw. And now we can remove the belt. Yeah, it's a relaxed belt, but you see how wide it is. It's a replacement belt. It's thin. It's it's very dry. Okay. Still stretchy, but I don't believe it will hold well for two tape to two cup stand transports. So now let's remove spacers, oil washers here. The black one. Remove capstan and here is another washer on the other side. Alright, small one and the big one. The big one has a big spacer here. It's a low friction washers, don't lose them. All right, so let's see. This will be counted dry it here fully. Next, I will open this cover. And we have to replace this small belt here. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's dry as well. It's already old, maybe 10, 15 years. All right, here you see we have a gear, so we would not need to use this tire. It's tire for the older generation CR7A when they had uh, other tire here installed all right this deck we don't need to do it let me see everything moves pretty well and smoothly no problem at all Yes, the old bobby count is still there. Hopefully I will clean and add a new one. Just to make sure that it will last longer. Alright. Uh 
And here we have the ball, a little bit more lubricant. Alright, this is what we need to lubricate from the front, and yeah, now it's, it goes easier. You can also add a little bit on the lower rollers. Okay. And I will do it a little bit later. So now here we will install the new belt. All right, and now we have to check because it has two grooves. So this reel has two grooves here. So we have to check if it's a little bit more light so it gets into the proper groove. Yeah, it's right there. And now I may check tangent. So you see when we pull heads up, this reel the gear would not be rotating because we lock it in place and why is that it will hold right even friction right all right Looks rotated. All right, now it's straight. Now it's rotated by itself. Now it's straight. Okay. Done with this part. And lubrication I also usually lubricate this chair here which are connected to the motor here all right and we need to lubricate where is the brakes connected So everything will work smoothly. All right. Now I will replicate bearings. from the front because they are not connected so front and rear bearings not connected all 
now we can install the piston. You see, it should rotate like that. Easy. With no friction. Good. Now installing the spacers on the front. And we would need to replicate this back. There is. belt. This is new stretch belt. Alright, So it's not a rocket science, it's not such, such complicated, you just need to follow the steps one by one to make sure you will be successful. Alright. This belt will need some time, it was compressed during shipment. It's a little bit wobbly, but it will be good over time. Alright, so now I will have to close this cover. When you install it, make sure it goes into those cuts here on both sides. That would be it, so these two wells go to the trash. This one will be returned to the owner. All right, now we have to assemble and clean everything. Technically, we may start cleaning right here because you have good access to the head. Or I'm also will verify how head is installed, so to make sure that we will not have a problems in the future. So now cleaning. I'm rotating substance to have them cleaned. 
specifically from the lubricant we added. So, uh, clean up the heads. While we have in the Texas. And I will clean up pinch rollers when we will assemble, make it rolling. Because this procedure will take some time. Demagnetizing heads. Ready to put in. You see this part? Remember, do not assemble front panel unless you tune it, because you will have to remove front panel again. All right. So there is access only when front panel is removed. All right. So see you soon, guys. Oh, I need to lubricate also with these chairs. Forget about it. All right, we will be installing in the opposite order that we were removing the tape transport. So make sure all head wires will go in and all connection wires go in. In, in other decks, I don't remember the screw being the spacer. So, to have this thing moving, I have seen such screws only on five RX505 series. Let's, let me increase view. So, I mean, like this part, I have seen this like that only on 505 series when they had those screws so i'm not quite sure if they're the proper ones but i don't see where they can get them from so no let's connect tape transfer back to the base
Okay, on the front we have a regular Phillips screw and on the bottom we have self-cut screws. Uh, see. It. Now, bottom part. No, no, I was wrong. <laughs> They're pretty close. screws from the bottom All right. Now let's connect the wires. So there's a playback head wire. So it goes underneath these boards. Is there? No, this is a short one. It's here. It's too longer. One is here. You cannot see. Other is here on top. Done. All right. So this is one of the record head. No, it's a rice head. Rice goes here. Is a blue one record hat. It connects right there. Done. Now play back hat. done so we can turn it on in this position these boards up and check so it should be working all right show signs of life Now I will be cleaning inch rollers. Sometimes it may take like 10 15 minutes, so I will stop here and turn on when I will complete cleanup. All right, I completed cleaning, so let's install the tape and see if we can play music. Yeah, levels are there. So let me show you. Oops, sorry. 
it's right here all right so next step i will be recapping this deck and then we will be tuning it together also i will replace this lithium battery see you soon and i'm back so you may see new capacitors installed on the dolby board new capacitors there 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 on the playback and record board so every capacitor which sits on the sound pass was replaced and i started tuning i'm using my g300 gauge to check the head's tilt and positions guide was good everything was more or less fine then i'm using the a mirror tape and i may show you how it looks like and i found that heat of both heads was off not much but still so here you may see a bit more light so here is a tape pass so i had to tune up a little bit heat because heads was I go in below the tape and like the border of the head uh, should be pretty in line with the border of the tape. So that's where I had to tune them to make sure the tape will go straight and additionally it will go properly on the proper height. Then I had to tune up playback azimuth at the zero position and record azimuth without calibration just to make sure that everything will be in line and will work properly. So I can show you record azimuth now. So if you're recording and it's 400 gears, let's go to 15 kilogears, for example, and that's how close it is on 15 kilogears. I probably adjust just a little bit, one click, if I can make it better. That's a better position, see. So there is a little bit left or a little bit right because Nakamichi has a tooth. Uh, but on 10 kilogears, for example, it's pretty fine on the Azimut perspective. All right, you see levels a little bit not even. I was able to adjust playback levels and I didn't start to work on the record levels yet. All right, so now we may check if calibrator will work properly. This is type one tape. You see, let's check it bias quickly, set up levels, no azimuth, and then level bias, and it's ready. And now we may see how it will record. And you see, it's, it's pretty fine. All right. And we can do white noise and see how well. So up to 18 kilogears, no drop. And the first drop are at 20 kilogears, which is pretty fine. So it's tuned very well. But I still will go through all the steps to verify uh, the automatic adjustment mechanism to make sure that everything works fine there. All right, so let me prepare for that and see you soon.